Hello, Waterford students. It's Mrs. Durst. And today we are going to do lesson 3C. We're still looking at how seasons affect our art. We've looked at winter and we've looked at spring. And so now we get to look at glorious summer. Back here is a painting I did many years ago of summertime in Utah. I found this cute little barn shed out in the countryside and I wanted to really bring in the summery feeling of all the different greens I was looking at in that whole landscape. Uh, you can almost tell that there's a storm coming in out in the distance and that's why the sky looks like it's deepening. So that was my take on Utah summer there. Um, but we are going to look at some very famous paintings that use summer to invoke wonderful feelings for us. Summer, I'm going to flip and share my screen, is a time when we have long days and short nights. That means that we can grow things, uh, we can enjoy ourselves because we may not have to have school, um, but you're going to see how through the years, summer really was a time where we used a lot of color. There's a lot of good feeling about summer and there feels like there's an abundance of goodness in a lot of these paintings. We'll talk about that. So here is, can you guess, a Peter Bruegel, the elder. So 450 years ago, he painted this image on oak, a very thin oak panel with oil paints, and this is called the Harvesters. This is probably depicting the August, month of August, and you can see that people are hard at work as a group trying to bring in the wheat or hay from the field. Now, wheat for people, hay for animals to eat through the winter. And you gotta pick it when it's ripe and perfect and dry. So they are working hard to get this wonderful product in from the field as fast as they can so it doesn't go bad and it doesn't get wet. But it's a hot work. Can you ma imagine in August cutting these uh, very difficult sticks down, bunching them, thrashing them, working with them all day. Uh, but there are things about this image, though we don't probably harvest our own wheat, that we can kind of understand. Let's look at these people under the tree, trying to get a little shade. You can see that the ladies are wearing kind of long hats to shade them from the sun. The men and women are all looking a little tired, like they could really use a nap. And in fact, there's a guy who is taking a nap because he's pretty tired. Uh, they're eating breads, cheeses, and a really nice refreshing soup made with onions and milk. Um, they're drinking water, they're hot, and they're looking to uh, revive with a little lunch. How about this guy? He's walking in from the field. He's out here walking in and he looks like he's out of water. He's tired, hot, and really looking for a nap. That's what I think. So I can relate to this guy, even though he was painted 450 years ago. Seasons can do that. They can take us back in time and help us relate to what's going on. Here's a very famous summer scene. Monet, we have talked about Claude Monet. He painted the water lilies we talked about. Springtime, the one with the girl under the lilac bushes in her beautiful light pink dress. We've also talked about his winter image, the magpie. Very famous. So this guy is really, really, really famous. And this is one of his best works, I think, called Field of Poppies. Now, this was painted in 1873, 
and that's about 147 years ago. Um, it's a painting of his son and his wife. And at the time, she was very sick. So I think this painting was of a moment that was very joyful, very full, but also very leisurely. They're taking a beautiful walk in this field of crimson red poppies. Uh, remember, photography was mostly, or all, black and white at this time. Color was just being investigated at the time that this painting was created. So if you wanted a color image of someone you loved, you usually would have them painted. Um, keep in mind, you can tell it's summer, not just because of the poppies that are in bloom, but look at all the different greens that Claude Monet put into this painting. There are blue greens and yellow greens and dark greens and light greens and muted greens and bright greens. It's every green in his box went into this picture. And that's something that you can do as you create your summer picture is get all your greens. Just have fun and let the greens go crazy because that's what a summer image usually holds. Ah, Van Gogh. We've talked about Van Gogh. He was a French painter who painted Starry Night. That's his most famous. He also did the Cafe at Night and the Almond Blossoms that we talked about last time. He loved the color yellow. And at the time he was painting his many, many, many sunflower paintings, yellow paint had just improved. The technology behind the paint had just improved so that cadmium, cadmium yellow and chrome yellow would really hold its color uh, in a painting. So he not only had great tools, he loved yellow and he loved sunflowers and he painted these for himself. His sunflowers actually decorated his own room in his rented houses in France. Now, people love these. His roommate and friend, Paul Gangwin, also loves his sun sunflowers. And Van Gogh gave him one of his sunflower images, but Paul wanted more. Paul wanted to have a couple of these sunflower paintings. And keep in mind, these were all over the house. So Paul's like, why can't I have a couple of these? Well, I guess they quarreled. And unfortunately, the night they quarreled the biggest and the most is the night that Vincent cut off his ear. Um, but let's talk about his sunflowers. Um, his yellows, his use of yellow is incredible. Uh, and if you go up close, you can actually see the brush strokes in his sunflower paintings. They are incredible. Now let's talk about this Paul Gangwin, Van Gogh's roommate for a while. Uh, they were friendly and then they'd fight and then they'd fight and they were friendly. Um, Paul Gangwin actually never really was famous during his own lifetime. He became famous later af after he passed away. But when he was a little boy, he grew up in Chile. He was French and his family had moved to Chile when he was a baby. And they lived there for a while until a civil war broke out. And then they returned to France. This painting is of Peru where they were. And um, it's a beautiful painting of a memory he had as a tiny, tiny boy of Peru. Now, Paul Gangwin does a beautiful job with all the different greens. He's known for his tropical images as well as his summery images because I think, I can't even count how many greens I'm looking at. Again, a summery image of a memory of Peru. Now, as he got older, he got to travel. He went to Panama. He traveled the Caribbean. 
and he captured this amazing image in, in a painting in the island of Martinique. It is beautiful. I just love all the greens that he used, blue greens and yellow greens. And gosh, he just went all the way through the spectrum of the rainbow in his handling of his summer work. In later in life, he moved to Tahiti and he ended up living there the rest of his life. And this is one of my, fam fa my favorite Ganguin pieces and it's called a Tahitian landscape. I just love the colors that he used to capture this very warm, tropical, summery environment. And I think he did a very well, good job capturing the man walking on the road with his dog kind of off to the side. Beautiful work. Ah, now you probably know that that's a courier knives. You're starting to recognize the art and the artist. So Courier and Ives, remember, was that print shop in New York that created through the 1830s, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, prints that people could afford, what, no matter what your station was in life. And so these were famous and almost found in every home throughout America. And this is the American Homestead Summer image. You see that the cows are really chubby and fat. They've been feasting on all that wonderful green grass. The chickens in the yard look spry and happy. And it just looks like a fabulous image with a many, 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 many different colors of green that tell us it's a rich, warm summer day. Ah! I think you might recognize this one as a Charles Waisaki. Aha! And this is one of my favorites. This is either called Sailing by Charles Waisaki or Rockland Breakwater Lighthouse, which is in Maine. Now this lighthouse sits on this real skinny, 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 skinny pier that makes the lighthouse looks like, look like it's sitting in the water. So it's a really unique setup here where this lighthouse looks like it's just like floating in the water. And the sailboats come around that lighthouse as the wind blows all summer long. But I love this painting because gosh, just look at that water. Look at the detail that Charles Waisaki got in that water that just looks so real, it's spellbinding. Now, though I don't see a ton of green in this painting, I can tell it's a summer scene because people are out on, a, on the water frolicking and enjoying themselves. There's a ferry boat out to the lighthouse. People are enjoying a summer's day in their sailboat. So there's a lot in here that tells me that this is a warm day or a very nice day as far as weather goes, but I just love the water in this painting. Here's his very famous uh, painting of the clamors. So you can, if you live by the ocean, at certain times of the year, go out and clam, that dig up the clams out of the sand and take them home and eat them as you cook them. So, this is another wonderful summer scene of people enjoying the shoreline. But look how his water, this is a Charles Waisaki, and see how the water is even different in this painting, how he captured the look of the waves coming up to shore. I thought, it, I thought this one was a good way to look at it from a different standpoint of the one we just saw. So now, hmm. Can you tell that this is a Ben Richmond? I think you're starting to see how certain artists' art might look. So Ben Richmond painted this painting called The Spirit of Lake Erie. And this is of a 
airplane that all summer long flies from the mainland of Ohio out to South Bass Island. South Bass Island has this town called Put-in Bay, and it is a wonderful summer place filled with shops and restaurants, and you can rent little uh, golf carts and drive all around this island, and there's beautiful homes to look at, and it's this perfect summer place. And this little airplane is how the kids in the fall and the winter go to school if they live on South Bass Island. But during the summer, it will take people that just want to visit the island. So that can be your school bus, or that is a way to go and enjoy a beautiful summer day. And that's called The Spirit of Lake Erie by Ben Richmond. Here is Alan Malley's Summer Romance. We've been looking at a lot of Alan Malley's paintings and we know that he won the Academy of War Award for his artwork in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. He also did artwork in the Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Spy Who Loved Me. So just a little movie trivia there. Um, while he was born in England, he lived in most of his life in California where he got to work on all of these movies. But his images are just fascinating because they capture the Victorian era so well and he uses seasons so very well. And here we have a summer image of, uh, it's called Summer Romance, and that is his wife and that is him in the chair. In fact, his wife is in almost every one of his paintings. So as you see in Alan Malley, look for her because she's probably there. And finally, we are gonna, oh, we have two more. This is called Summer Pastime by Alan Malley. This is, of course, of tennis. And you can see that uh, everyone is enjoying a bright summer day, enjoying strawberries at the table, and enjoying the fabulous sport of tennis. So another great summer image with many, many layers of green. And our final painting for today is one of that carousel that we saw in an Alan Malley painting for winter. And here it is in all its glory in the summertime. What a happy image uh, to share with you today. And I hope you enjoyed seeing all of this very, very famous summer art. So, as we move forward, I'd love you to find your lesson three paper with the summer uh, image, as well as your color palette. As we move from the winter color palette to the spring, today we'll be working in the summer color palette. I think you know what's gonna go in there. So until we get to do art again. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.